Now, after understanding what exactly exception is, it is time to understand how we can handle it and what are the some what are some keywords or statements with the help of which we can handle the exceptions while the program is executing. And here they are. Number one, throw statement. So this throw statement basically allows you to throw an exception in a particular program. So whenever uh, like you, you face a particular problem or something like that and you want to throw a particular type of exception, you're going to be using the throw keyword, right? And with the help of throw keyword, uh, you can throw any exception which will be catched uh, later on by the catch block, which we'll just discuss after this, uh, and will be handled accordingly. So that's what the case is. So let's see what is written over here. A throw statement is used to generate an exception or to signal that an exception has occurred. Yeah, this is a crisp definition of it. Uh, it, it helps you uh, signal that there is an exception that has occurred and now you got to handle that in order for the program to continue the execution, right? So that's what it is. Next is try catch finally statement. So again, uh, try catch fi finally is uh, like they are keywords of course, but they are different different blocks which key, like which uh, which consists of different different parts of program with the help of which we handle the exceptions, right? Let's look at them one by one. So a try block. Try block encloses the code where exception can occur. What that means is that whatever code you think uh, that can generate an exception or that can, yeah, that can generate an exception, you should write that code down inside a try block. And all what you write, need to write down is try and after try, you need to just open a curly brace and end it till the time you think that uh, there can be an exception that can occur. And after this try block, you need to write down catch or finally block. And let me tell you what catch or finally block is. So catch block is optional and comes immediately after the try block and can handle a particular type of exception. A single try statement can have zero or more associated catch statements where each catch statement must have a unique exception type. Okay, so let me tell you what that is. When you say try, it is something which is throwing an exception, right? When we, we, we uh, throw a ball, let's say, uh, in football, right? In American football, I'm talking about. Whenever you throw a ball, uh, from the place where you are throwing it, that place should be a try block. The place where this ball needs to be catched and handled accordingly is called as a catch block, right? And inside the catch block, we can... Uh, accept a particular type of exception and hand and write down the code which will handle the execution of that particular program. Uh, we will we'll go deep down uh, inside the catch block later on while I'll be discussing the syntax of uh, writing down try catch and finally block. But I, oh, at overall it's just uh, that in the try block there is an exception that is occurring. So whatever uh, code you think that you're writing down that might generate uh, an exception should be written down inside the try block and the catch block should handle it and catch block should be just written after the try block in order to catch the exception that has been thrown from the try block and uh, yeah you, you just need to write down the code which will handle that particular exception inside the catch block so that's what it is okay and by the way uh, in, in like there can be multiple catch blocks as well depending on the number of uh, exceptions that might generate inside the try block. So like there are different, different types of ex exceptions, like let's say A exception, B exception, C exception. So if you think that if A exception occurs, this code should get executed. If B exception occurs, this code should get executed. And if C exception occurs, this code should get executed. So in that case, you can have multiple catch blocks and inside different, different catch blocks, uh, you can have different, different code written specific for A exception or B exception or C exception. Depending on which type of exception it is, uh, you can write down the code to handle it inside the catch block. So that's what it is. And by the way, uh, whenever uh, an exception is thrown, uh, only one catch block will catch it. So like whenever you're throwing a particular ball, there can be only a single person who will catch it and will take it along, right? It, it cannot happen that you're throwing a single ball and there are five people who are catching that same ball at the same time. That, that's something that's not possible. And it's the same case with uh, try and catch block as well. So whenever, whichever exception is uh, being thrown, uh, there will be only one catch block which will catch it 
and we'll execute the code and the rest of the catch blocks will uh, will will be there like like that only no code which is written inside the other catch blocks will get executed if it has been catched by a single or any of the catch block so that's what it is there's a note in here once a particular exception type uh, is caught in one catch block the remaining catch blocks uh, if any are not executed again this is exactly what i was talking about now let's talk about finally block so finally block is mandatorily executed at the end whether the exception occurred in the try block or not and by the way so first listen to it finally block is a block which you want to get executed irrespective of whether uh, an exception occurred in the try block or not this is the code that you want to execute irrespective of the exception occurred or not in the try block and that's all what it is even if there is an exception that occurred the finally block will get executed even if the exception didn't occur in the try block the finally block will execute it so finally block is basically used in scenarios in which like uh, yeah it's basically used in the scenarios in which uh, yeah in <laughs> in which you want the, want a particular code to be executed irrespective of the exception occurring or not so yeah and it's again when it say finally block is mandatorily executed this doesn't mean that finally block is mandatory to add with every try block it's optional again you can either have a catch block or a finally block or multiple catch blocks or uh, something like that but it's not like that you uh, you can have only a single try block with a try block you either need a finally or a catch or multiple catch blocks so that's what the case looks like so both of them are optional but there should be at least one block which catches uh, the exception so that's what the case is it is not compulsory for every try block to have finally associated exactly as i described with it and also there can be at uh, at max only one finally block again finally block can only be one because there is no exception type that it captures it gets executed irrespective of the exception occurring or not forget about the types of exceptions right the types of exceptions only matter for the catch blocks not for the finally block finally block is generally generally used to clean up code or for freeing up resources so yeah that's what it is note with every try block there should be at least one catch or one finally block associated just we discussed exactly what we discussed